Okay, our next speaker, our next speaker is all over Denver. She's, she's like a renaissance woman of all kinds of goodness. Who knows Kia? You see? She improves lives everywhere, and she's still working on her wonderful husband, but with ladies-like projects. She has two lovely boys. Let's give it up for Kia Ruiz. being consumer in America. It's kind of a shit show right now. It'd be kind of a bummer. So I don't want to wear off your beer buzz. I'm going to throw in some For example, have you heard of the movie Constipation? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Probably not. It hasn't dropped yet. Boom, boom. Okay. So I'm doing that because first, if you're talking about being a consumer, you need to talk about inequality of wealth in America. Now this was pretty viral a few years ago. Maybe two years ago, I think. Uh, but it basically shows that 1% that Occupy Wall Street educated everybody on. A lot of inequality in America right now. But for whatever reason, Colorado's economy somehow have been able to be kind of resilient with this, right? For whatever reason, as consumers, we're able to afford a lot of things. And this is showing up in housing in Denver. So some of you out there actually got homes pretty early on and they're appreciating. But how many of you out there are having a hard time finding a place to rent? Yeah, come on, let's be real here, okay? So anyway, uh, those are consumers that actually have some expendable money usually to have this kind of choice. Uh, not everybody does, though. As you can see here, the situation in America, we have maybe about 15% of our population is below the poverty line. So it's not the consumer sort of conversation because, hey, they sometimes don't have a place to live. This is really sad. 1% now owns 24% of our wealth. And uh, so I have a friend, yeah, switching gears. Um, she asked her boyfriend, uh, do you ever pee in the shower? And he goes, uh, sometimes accidentally. And she's like, oh, that's so gross. And he goes, well, it happens sometimes when you're taking a dump, right? Yeah. Boom, boom. Okay. <laughs> so to equal out the playing field for consumers, one thing that everybody can talk about is food, right? Doesn't matter how poor you are, you're usually eating. Because come on, who here has given food to a homeless person? They've been like, that's not healthy enough, right? So I'm wearing a shirt. I'm not shilling, though. I'm going to talk about my main food issue in America with consumers, hyper-processing. Everybody does not know basic food anymore. And it's not our fault though, right? We go to the store, and what do we see? Boxes upon boxes upon boxes. And it isn't that America became lazy. They basically were too busy trying to make that money, not having the disposable income, and thinking that God and government were taking care of them. When in fact, some of these corporations we're working with have just blown up and become so huge, almost like that 1%. So this right here is a picture comparing basically the money made last year compared to the gross domestic product of a country. If Pepsi was a country, they'd be Sudan. <laughs> Kraft would be Honduras. Monsanto would be Botswana. Sudan is oil rich. Pepsi is seriously rich. Now that's everything drive and all kinds of other food. And because poverty in America is not what it was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, you give people rice and beans and they would know how to cook it. Give poor people rice and beans now, and they're not shitting and farting from it. Sorry, nobody knows what to do with it. <laughs> Give rich people rice and beans, same thing. Eight out of one, oh shit. Okay, I'm hoping you remember this though. It's actually one out of eight children in Colorado are going hungry. Despite our economic resiliency here, you never know who's in the So these are consumers that don't have that expendable money. And you're finding a lot of consumers now are making a choice to invest in different ways. There's slow money, there's people going to foreign food, but honestly, I can't afford to go to these slow money things. I've never been. So for you as a consumer, you need to kind of figure out what aligns with your values, okay? Uh, this right here is a farmer's market that I found by Westcliff, and they seriously have Star Trek stuff all over the place. So if I was there, that's who I'd be giving my money to. But for all of you that are kind of like maybe starting out with where do I get my money about the food system, these are some of my heroes. Um, Mary Nestle, she uh, works as a professor in New York. Uh, people like uh, Lynn Rosetto Casper, Split the Table. Woo! Yeah, that SNL skit where those people all like food is delicious. Yeah, that's that, okay? <laughs> but for all of you, kind of figure out wherever you are and just vote with your dollar. You hear it, it's rhetoric, blah, 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 but vote with what aligns with your values in whatever capacity you have. Because if you have extra money, there's no reason you shouldn't be a happy shopper. Right? <laughs> and let America be less of a shit show. It's on you. 
very basic, and I hope you guys are kind of already going to your farmer's markets and everything. And basically, you know the saying, life is like a shit sandwich. It seems like there's less shit to eat, but the more bread you have. So <laughs> none of us in here are the 1% in this theater with all this character, I'm assuming. <laughs> but <laughs> you guys can all figure out what aligns with your values and what you can't afford. And since I am the Ignite photographer, I guess I'm supposed to be taking pictures up here. Oh well. <laughs> yeah.